Hello, everybody! W Finally, I'm your newest member of BGO, Biffy 7 c 11 Basically, I decided <laughs> it'd be funny if I bug my friends to do a Phoenix Wright playthrough, even though none of them own the Phoenix Wright trilogy. And then I became a member, and now I'm doing it. So, oh, not continue. Whoops. Um, so, we're going to do the first trial today in the original game. Um, called the first turnabout. Such a creative name. So, yeah, I have played this game before. I haven't played the later ones as much as I played the first one. So, let's just get into it. I will be narrating, by the way, I should mention. Gasp. Gasp! Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I, I, I've gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like... HIM! I'll make it look like he did it! August 3rd. 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous! Right! Oh, uh, hey, Chief! Whew. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. She will say that a lot. Not everyone takes a murder trial right on the bat like this. This says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um... Thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favour. A favour? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. Want to help him out in it? I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is, it, is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, little Larry. Dude, I am so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I'm finished! FINISHED! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Aw, oh, Nick. You gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm. Person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say... It was you. My name's Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. I change the voice too often. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was un the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school has a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been toy. Toy? Toy? True. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone, he's a good guy at heart. And that I owe him, which is why I took this place. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. 
Yeah, I'm not reading that again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Course is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. L Liam, uh, d defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh, hum! Mr. Wright, is this your first trial, is it not? Uh, it, y yes, Your Honor, I'm uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your clients. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Uh, thank, thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Uh, yes, Your Honor. <coughs> Hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and consistently. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what is the victim's name? Phew. I know this one. Glad I read, I read the case report cover so many times. It... Wait. Uh-oh. No way. I forgot. I am drawing a total blank here. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim? <laughs> of course I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? So basically, what you have to do here is press, like, tab, and then check here, Cindy. But because I'm a pro, all I have to do is just go... Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Mm-hmm. Correct. But tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was what? Uh, you'd also have to press tab and check the thingy again. And, you know, it says there. But, again, I am great, so. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all of my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. So I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne. Payne? Prine? Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what this object was? The murder weapon was the statue of... The Finker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. This court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Yeah, so, you know. I'm sure we all know how Phoenix Wright works. But if you don't, basically, you need to, like, find evidence and then use it against your enemy, the prosecution. Which, in this case, is, um, Wilston Twain Payne. The one with the weird voice. I'll just... Yeah, that's basically just tutorial. Alright, now, we're actually into the game. The prosecution calls the defendant. Mr. Butt to this oh, I wasn't doing the voice. Uh Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance. Respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. 
What's it to you anyway? Mr. Mr. Butts, what you describe is genuinely what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had returned from overseas from one of the days before her murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm. Indeed. She returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not uh, did not have a large income. It appears she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, all the men who gave her money and gifts. She took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude, we can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right, I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of ruining, run it, running his mouth in the wrong directions. Should I stop him from answering? My client has no idea that the victim was sleeping, seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Wince! Dude, Ned, what do you mean irrelevant? A cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not going to be looking so good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <coughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he won. What do I do? Have him answer, honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell. The. Truth! Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her? Objection! Your Honor, the defendant is lying! Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying! Well, I... Simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant flee in the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor! This is bad. Oh, on the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring me. Please bring Mr. Frank Sorrett to the stand. Ah, oh, I really want to punch that face. Mr. Sorrett, you sell newspapers subscriptions, is this correct? Oh! Oh, yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sorrett, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay, so this is where one of the key aspects of Ace Attorney comes in. Listen to their testimonies, cross-examine, and then prove them wrong. I was going door-to-door uh, -door selling subscriptions when I, I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must have been in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quelled. I was frightened and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 pm. So, that's the contradiction. Because if we look at the court record here, time of death. 4pm to 5pm. 
Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, it wasn't. Why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Soritz used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the black house for your persusual. Blackout record added to the court record. No, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave? Lies. What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then the witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client that is really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you're... Well, you've found the contradicting evidence. Present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tab. And then point out contradictions in the testimony. examination. Alright, I'm not reading this again, so we're just going to get to where he contradicts himself. Well, not himself, but just the case in general. Then you want to present, and then you want to, you know, press E. Wait, what? Oh, wait, no. I, I <laughs> pressed the wrong one. Whoops. Uh, hold on, let's skip this part. Whoops. I meant to press the autopsy report. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, crap. Yeah, that was my fault. Uh, whoops. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to press press. Okay. 1pm. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. He seems really confident. 1pm. Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence and to contradict him. Yes, I know, uh, right, that was just my fault, that was a dumb move, uh, oh, he's showing up, Jeshin. You found the body at 1pm. You're sure? Yes, it was 1pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes that the time of death at some time after 4pm. There was nobody, uh, no body, to find at 1pm. How do you explain this three hour gap? Uh, oh, that, oh, uh... This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find it hard to believe. Mr. Soritz, why are you so certain that you found the body at 1pm? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, White. Great to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always begets. More lies. See through one. The whole story falls apart. That's actually a real strategy lawyers use, so, you know, that's really cool. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give me your testimony again? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice on saying the time. It's probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I could see why you heard a voice saying the time on the... Taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. You see, when I find... Uh, 
here, this one. Yeah, so he how can the witness how can the victim have been watching a taped program when there was a blackout until six PM? So you always know when you've got it right because the music stops. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of discovery. And this record proves it. What? You couldn't have heard the television. Or the video. Yeah. I. Well. Uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this Mr. Soritz? No. I. Uh, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah. Wait. Wait. I remember now. Mr. Soritz. The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These consistent contradictions are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Uh, uh, my, my apologies, Your Honor. It um, uh, must have been a shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Soret. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time, I saw it. There was a table click in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon the killer used to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw the clock? I guess that would explain it. The defence may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. So, he never went in... He never went inside though, did he? So, how would he have been able to see the murder weapon? Wait a minute, this is a statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? And now you know you're winning. <laughs> You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sorrett. Hey, I... Uh, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may? Y yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this was the statue. is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it. And it says the time out loud. And if it doesn't look like the clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. White. It appears the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Nah, you know I don't. Of course I do. Your Honor! Who's <laughs> a gapping hole in the witness's testimony? The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hands. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. Oh, <laughs> you're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court! Intreating. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sorrett, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless. Con baseless. Just look at the witness's face. Uh, yeah. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I. Th uh, that day. I, I never. Look, I, the, the clock, I heard no, I mean, I saw. S -s -s ah! Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. 
It was him, I tell you. I saw him. He killed her, and he should burn. Burn! Keep him deaf. Order in the court. Order, I say. Your Honor, a, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shit of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor. Your claim, the sounds heard from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sorrett heard was definitely this clock. In fact, which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock. Now, here in this court, Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is strange to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, could you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the... Discrepancy, that's what it says. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sorrett heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sorrett, try and talk your way out of this one. <sighs> ha! Ha ha ha! You forgot one thing. Uh-oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do I know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? We can't prove that you don't have a case. Uh, he's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Stewart. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal! A criminal! A, a criminal? I, I can't say that. Oh, you lawyers are slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sowett! Mia! Uh, I, I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, well yes. But that doesn't mean you kill Stan Win. Kill Stan Win, what? Try sounding out, try thinking out of the box. Don't waste your time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason. And you'll have your proof. Right, right. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright. You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence that supports this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words! Let's see if we can pull this one off. But see evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. You see, I have literally no reason why it's this other than 1, 2, and 3 have already been used, so... Take that! The victim had just returned from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4pm here, it's 1am the next day though. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast! The victim hasn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you shook her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sorrett? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Yeah.
Ah, oh, look out, that is disgusting. <laughs> order! O order, I say! Well, that case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, um, was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And I find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. So that's the end of the first case. Um, there's still a bit, like, after the case that I need to do, but, you know, it just sets up the second case. So after that, it turns out that Frank Sorrett was a common burglar. He posted as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After we led, Mr. Sorrett let him in to do his dirty work. While he was searching for her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sorrett grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And killed her. What a monster. I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations. Uh, but thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since a trial... A trial end has been such... On a satisfied... I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's glad, imagine how Harry... Harry? Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry! You're supposed to be happy! What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good! Wait, no! No, I mean bad! Bad, bad, bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my... Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. My Cindy Windy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was... Uh... Never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts ir innocent. <laughs> uh, thanks, I owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat? Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey, uh, here, take this. It's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that actually I made this clock for her? I made one for her and one for me. Really? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick! Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she just played me for a fool. Don't think... Doesn't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry... Are you so sure? Uh, excuse me? I think she thought a lot about you in her own way. Nah, you're sympathised with me. Oh, I'm not sympathising really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friends? Something... Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? You see, she brought this on um, vacation with her, so it's this. Check this out, Larry. Proof. Positive you weren't some just... Just some chum to her. Huh? What about that clock? It was the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she travelled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take travelling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right, I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realise things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them.
And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Oh, I skipped that. Whoops. Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us unless you count the clock he gave me. I didn't know it then, but that clock soon was going to become the centre of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for joining me on this uh, little journey of ours through the first trial of the Ace Attorney game. Uh, I plan to do Turnabout Sisters, which is the second trial. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Hey, so, uh, thanks for watching. Basically, I'm new, and I'm great, so you're going to see more of me. I promise. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, and like the video, because we need that, because it's nice. Also, if you want to see more, definitely leave a comment saying that you want to see more. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye!